<laughs> Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. So first thing, let's do a check. I did, I've been using, I'm using a new software. I used a software yesterday. It was a fiasco for some of you that have seen that. I um, saw that video. So today we're going to be talking about leaf mold. The discussion will start at 11.05. So let's just do a quick sound check now. Can you guys hear me and see me? I want to make sure that the broadcast software is working. And we're going to be talking about leaf mold today. If you're watching this after the live event, check out the pinned post um, or the video description and it will tell you exactly when the content starts. This way you're not watching me for the next five or ten minutes. I've signed on a little bit early just so I can kind of test out the software. Um, and again, for those of you that are in the chat, if you just give me, I can hear you, I can see you. Okay, good. It's starting to come in. All right. So yesterday was a fiasco. That was for a classroom series I'm doing with Perk memberships. If you guys are interested in something like this this is a small format classroom that'll be about 15 minutes once we get rolling the topic is going to be on leaf mold why is it beneficial um, how do you make it what's it good for how do you use it and i have a couple cameras set up now so we'll be able to go to a demonstration camera i will be able to show you leaf mold in different um, stages of decomposition and i have a couple videos that i will run so good morning everybody <laughs> i'm so happy things are working. Again, we'll get started at 11.05. That's in about four minutes. So my membership perks, I have um, basically tiers and I'm doing formal classrooms for the second tier. They're, they usually are going to go for about an hour, maybe longer. It's a small class. I teach just like I showed you with the demonstration camera and I will answer everybody's questions. It's like a classroom. The classes are really small, maybe 20 to 50 people. Thank you, Clam. Um, I'm excited for that. And everybody that is a current member, I greatly appreciate all of you and thank you for helping me figure this out because I want to deliver tiers that work. So if you can give this video a thumbs up, if you like it, that would be great. I want to kind of get the word out that I'm doing this new format and thumbs up helps greatly. Plus it lets me know what videos you all like and I will do more of them. So before we get to the formal content, I want to just test out throwing up sort of a commercial. This is for Hoselink. Some of you have already seen this. I am affiliated with Hoselink. They are doing a really impressive giveaway right now. They're giving away um, $500 in cash, $600 in merchandise to three winners. Um, and I will put how you kind of get to them in the video description. So go back to this at the end. They're, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a big giveaway. I've been working with them for three years. Anyway, here is the Hoselink video and the contest ends for entries, I think on November 16th. But let's give this a try, make sure this works, and then we'll get to the content of the series. Hose Link has really changed the way I water my garden. This is an 82 foot retractable hose. I've been using it for several years. It really makes the chore watering that much more easier because you can pull the hose out, take it to where you need to, give the hose a snap, it recoils right back into there. But today I want to announce they are doing a giveaway. Three lucky winners are going to win a $500 cash prize and $600 in merchandise. And it's going to include an 82 foot retractable hose just like I use in my garden. Check out the video description for details. Hose link makes a difference in your garden. Whoops, sound was messed up. So that is Hose Link. I will put the link for the video description, or I will put the link in the video description of how to enter that contest. Let me just type this out and we'll, we will get started. All right, sound should be fixed. All right, so in the chat, I will answer a couple questions at the end, um, but this is really for the presentation on leaf mold. Um, the benefits, how you make it, all that kind of stuff. So throw out your questions about leaf mold into the chat 
and I will kind of incorporate that into what we're doing. So right now, I think sound is good, video is good. Hopefully the video showed up for hose link, that all worked. I'm gonna present three videos in here with respect to the compost. So let's just get started with leaf mold. So a couple of things, it's called leaf mold, that freaks people out because they hear the word mold, people think mold is bad. All things that decompose are compost. So this is really leaf compost. Primarily, mold doesn't even break down the leaves. It's really a fungal process, but fungus, fungi, mold, and bacteria break your leaves down into a compost. We call it leaf mold, and it's just wonderful for the garden. To me, compost is what gardening is all about. And it's what gardening is all about, and it's what organic gardening is all about. So adding compost, if it's leaves or other types of compost, it really makes a difference in your garden. And why is that important? The chemical fertilizers and the organic fertilizers do very little for your soil life and building up the soil structure. That is something that is key. They feed the plants, which is good, but that's only that's kind of where they have their value. So when you're throwing down fish emulsion or organic fertilizers, you're not really building soil structure. You're feeding the plants. Do have a benefit that the soil life is fed by them. So when you put down an organic granular, bacteria and such has to kind of chew it, digest it, break it down, changes it into a form of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium your plants can use, as well as other fertilizers. But it doesn't add to the structure of your soil. And that soil structure, just like the floor of a forest, is what creates beautiful plants. And that is really the benefit of leaf mold. Leaf mold, leaf compost is just a cheap, inexpensive, and easy way to really bring organic matter to your soil and build beautiful soil. And just so that you know, we're not building soil down like two feet deep. We're just getting this leaf compost in that top six, eight inches. And that's what makes a difference. And you don't have to do this day one of your garden. You can just do this a little bit each year, build it up, and you're going to have wonderful, wonderful soil. All right, let me just check this real quick. And basically, I mean, we want decomposed compost. That's, I think, where it gets its name, organic matter in your garden, just like you find on a forest floor. It's really important. We'll switch over to a camera shortly. I'll show you how leaf mold decomposes. You really want to have a product when you're using compost that is fully broken down. If you don't and you mix it into the soil, it's gonna kind of take the nitrogen from the soil in the beginning because the soil biology, the microbes need that to break it down. So the key for compost is letting it age long enough so that when you use it, it benefits your garden. All right, so leaf mold is the easiest way to sustain your gardens organically. It's really leaf compost. So this is a fungal process versus a mold process versus a hot composting process. That all gets confusing, but all you need to know is that when you put leaves in a pile, keep them moist, they're going to break down. And that's what we're shooting for. Let me pause a second, check the questions. Walnut tree leaves, you can use, yes. The walnut trees, the black walnut tree, really has something to do with the root systems. All right, so checking the questions real quick. Yes, you can use that. Um, it's best if you chop up the leaves. I'll be talking about that. The more you chop up leaves, the more surface you ha area you have, the more quickly it breaks down. Thank you for uh, keeping an eye on the thumbs up. All right. So this is why leaf mold, leaf compost benefits your garden. Now, let me actually say this. So when it, leaves are on a tree, they're nice and green. They're full of nitrogen, they're alive, they've got all these nutrients in there. As winter approaches and leaves begin to turn brown, a tree actually will stop putting in good stuff that's good for the garden and will take back stuff. So when a leaf is fully brown, like it, it completely browns, dries, you harvest it a couple of weeks or months after it's on the ground, it's not really full of a ton of nutrition for fertilizer. Lots of micronutrients, it benefits the garden, but leaf mold is really about providing soil structure, giving compost, composted materials to build your soil structure. Compost, 
when you're throwing in grass and even some leaves and uh, organic matter, old plants from your garden, food scraps, um, wood ash, uh, manures, chicken bedding, that all breaks down and really creates a nicer level of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. However, leaf mold does the trick. You can see that by looking at forest floors. And the game really isn't to jack up your soil with high nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium right away and keep it at high levels. It's to provide that organic matter through leaf mold, through compost, slowly, slowly, slowly provide N, P, and K and everything your plants need. So that's really important. What I like about leaf mold is one, it creates a fluffy soil. Basically, you have air pockets. Your soil life needs all that air to grow. Air, oxygen basically creates happy soil life. Also, your plant systems need oxygen, so your root systems need oxygen. If it's really compact, there's, it's harder for worms to crawl through there. It's harder for soil life to thrive. There's no organic matter. When you put the leaves down, they're not 100% fully decomposed. They're just to a level that's great for the garden. Bacteria, worms still keep chewing on that in the garden and they give you great stuff back. So a little bit of difference between leaf mold, leaf compost, and then your, just your general compost. The leaf mold is gonna hold water so when you're incorporating that into that top six or eight inches of your soil, when it rains, when you water, moisture is gonna be held in there. It's not gonna drain through if your soil is sandy. If you have clay soil, it'll help break up that clay soil, make it more loose. So you're fluffing up the soil, you're retaining moisture. Provides life. Soil biology, all types need organic matter in there. That's why if you're not using compost or leaf grow, um, manures, compost in general, and you just have, you know, your clay soil, and you're just throwing down that organic granular, you're feeding the plants, your plants, thank you, Isabel, your plants are giving, um, your plants are getting the fertilizer that they need, and the organic fertilizer feeds that bacteria that's there briefly while it munches on it and decomposes it. But it's that organic matter that you gotta get into your garden. That's what I wanna stress. All right, so again, not a ton of N, P, and K in leaf mold or leaf compost, but the worms love it. This is why I love the leaf mold. Now, I'm gonna show you a video in a second, give you some ideas of how to build the pens and stuff like that. Worms love leaves. They crawl through it, they chew them, they digest them, they excrete worm castings. Worm castings have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, calcium in there. Plus they have metabolites, the metabolites basically in short are growth hormones that you know plants and worms have had this relationship since the beginning those growth hormones from the worms help stimulate root growth and strengthen the roots leaves bring in beautiful worms now I saw somewhere in here about the jumping worms we don't have them or at least I don't have them in my area so jumping worms could be an issue um, I'd have to research more to tell you why but it is a problem and I trust the gentleman that was just talking about that. So you could build your bins off the ground, have some holes in there that drain out, but you just create a gap so the jumping worms don't get in there. You could put in worms, earthworms into it that are legit worms, you know, because you do want worms crawling through there creating the castings. You just don't want the fungal or mold decomposition of leaves. You want worms in your pile to be doing, you know, wonderful things for them. Okay. All right, so let's go over to the first video. And while you're watching that, I will check out the questions in the chat. So here are a couple leaf bin examples. Here are a couple of my compost bins. The whole key is that you want the bins to be about four feet by four feet wide, and you want to have enough space to pile the leaves up to four feet high. That kind of pile keeps moisture in there, allows the molds, the fungus, the bacteria to do its thing. If you put a roof on top, I made this mistake, this was a complete roof, I had to remove some of the boards so the rain would get into there. So moisture is key. You know, you can put this in a sunny spot, but you're gonna have to maybe tarp it or just keep kind of watering it down with a hose or something like that. So a shadier area keeps that moisture in the pile. And I have a couple different leaf 
uh, pens going here. If you don't want to build a pen, you can certainly, you know, do a pile. Sometimes the leaves blow around, so you'd want to put a tarp down. There's another pen. Let me spin around slowly, show you something that I just built. We're going to talk about this in the next video um, in a couple of minutes, and that's going to show you the decomposing leaves in there. Just built this area. You can see the hose is out because I'm keeping the pile moist. T-posts, wire, I have videos on that on my YouTube channel, four feet by four feet. It is 40 degrees right now. This has been going now 20 plus days at over, and you can see that, 140 degrees. There's warmth in there. There's uh, soil bacteria in there that's digesting things, helping this break down. Leaf compost is gonna take about a year in general to break down to something that um, we can use in a garden. However, we can use it at different stages. At the end of this video, I'll show you a couple examples of le uh, leaf mold, how it's been breaking down over the last 12 months. When you first harvest freshly fallen leaves, there's a lot of nitrogen in the leaves still. So if you make your pens now, October, November, there's nitrogen in here, which helps feed soil biology, specifically microbes, helps heat up the pile and it decomposes the leaves a little bit more quickly. If you just collect uh, brown leaves that have been laying on the ground for a couple of months, a lot of times there's not a lot of nitrogen in there, so the process is a little bit slower. So collect the leaves now, get some leaves in there that have nitrogen in there, and this pile is gonna break down more quickly. So the whole idea um, with respect to, <laughs> lost the thought, <laughs> the whole idea with respect to creating a leaf mold compost bin, pin, pin, bin, <laughs> pen or bin or pile is to have it about four feet by four feet wide and you want it to be about four feet tall. That keeps moisture in there. That moisture is what supports fungus, molds, bacteria, just keeps that digesting over the year. So you can do it in many ways. I showed you a couple of the examples. And the key really to think about this is if you get totally dry, crunchy leaves, when you pick them up, they crumble they um, are going to not have a lot of nitrogen. If you collect the leaves now, you, you saw how that pile heated up. I also do have some grass in there. That's going to break down quicker. Generally speaking, your compost for leaves is going to break down over a 12-month period. But it can be a little bit sooner or a little bit longer based on temperatures, additional stuff you might be putting in there, moisture, just kind of different variables. So when we get towards the end of this in a few minutes, I'll give you a visual of how do you know when your, your leaf mold is, is ready to go. Thank you for the information on the um, jumping worms. Just checking through the questions real quick. So there was questions. So when you get leaves, now I understand, you know, you may not have trees on your property. You might be in an area where you can't get um, leaves like I have. So pine needles are okay. They are more acidic, but in the decomposition process, worm castings help regulate pH. That acidity from pine needles lowers. You also need a ton of pine needles to really move the pH. So putting in pine needles is fine. I have them mixed into mine. In fact, I'm gonna show you a quick video um, that you'll see pine needles that I use for mulch. So that works. If your leaves that you collect have spots on there, that is a fungus, it's related to the tree, it can decompose, it can break down, it's not gonna hurt your garden. If you don't have trees around you and you can drive to places where people are putting their leaves out, you can take those pretty freely. Like if you've got grass from people, that's a problem because it may have chemicals sprayed on it to control weeds. But very rarely, if ever, do tree leaves have anything sprayed on them. So you could build your compost bins, your piles out of leaves you get from other places. I use a lawnmower, it chops up my leaves. I have a tractor mower, it helps speed up the process. Also the thinner the leaves, like a um, maple leaf, it has really thin leaves and it crumbles away. You don't even have to chop those up. They're just beautiful leaves. So the thinner the leaf structure, the more quickly it decays. When you go to oak leaves that are thicker, um, you do want to chop them up. An oak leaf can go way up, well, a whole oak leaf can go well beyond a year before it breaks down. When you crumble something up, it creates um, little pieces, and those outer edges of those pieces create more surface area, therefore, things break down more. 
All right, so let's go to, let me just check my outline so I can move this along. All right, let's go to the leaf compost bin. That's gonna show you another way that I, leave compo uh, that I leaf compost. Maybe you could use this if you're concerned about the jumping worms. They still need drainage, but if you raise these bins up, it'd be harder for worms, the jumping worms, to crawl in there too. You do wanna kinda of look for earthworms that are out in your garden, pick them up, maybe even gently rinse them. I know it sounds terrible, but you don't want any eggs from the jumping worms. So you don't wanna take a shovel full of dirt, throw it into your leaf compost, and then you have eggs in there. Jumping worms generally get killed off by the freeze is my understanding, but their eggs survive. So if you find some worms, you clean them up a little bit, put them into your leaf compost bin that's off the ground, that should help with the jumping worms. All right, so here is the leaf video. I get a lot of questions about leaf composting, also called leaf mold. And remember, everything that decomposes is compost. These bins get filled up with leaves in October, November, Come the next October, November, they get dumped into here. There are holes in the bottom of these cans. You can use metal cans, you can use plastic cans. This is all about to get dumped right into the container there. And you can see how these leaves have broken down. It's just beautiful. Gets thrown into here, further decomposes. If we dig down further, it's a little sludgy. Oh, look at that worm. It's a little sludgy because we just had tons of rain. But this is what you're looking for. I will let this kind of dry out and this becomes compost, leaf mold, that I throw right into my garden. This is not a big footprint. You know, you can go larger, of course, if you want. But this is just a consistent way to really keep that leaf mold, leaf compost uh, kind of growing, so to speak. And this is just great stuff for your containers and for your earth beds. So I saw a couple of questions with respect to mulching for your lawn. So you can do both. Like if I collected every cuttings, uh, every lawn cuttings that I did, I would have too much compost, which is crazy to hear somebody say. So for a while I will um, mulch my lawn, do the, let the trimming just fall on the lawn and mulch the lawn. Then sometimes I bag it and I use it for compost. So you can kind of really do both. If you don't see worms, I like the night crawlers. I mean, usually what you buy online are red wigglers. I used to do worm composting bins, but I just don't need to do that now because I have so much compost and so much leaf compost. You could buy worms, but they should, I'd be more worried that you don't have worms showing up in your garden. So they're probably there. Um, but I think as you add more compost into your garden, maybe you're going to start seeing the worm um, population go up. If you're doing leaf mold and you're just doing the leaf mold and it doesn't have the casting in, castings in it, you don't have those right away. But when you take that leaf mold, put it into your garden beds, worms that are there will digest that. They will break it down. They will start naturally adding in castings. So it's not like we just put castings in because we made leaf mold. We're putting in the leaf mold and continued supplies of worm castings get put in the garden because the worms are eating and excreting the castings. That's the benefit of using organic matter in your garden. It keeps sustaining itself over the years. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, the night crawlers for fishermen are fine. I don't, I mean, I know they're usually fine because the night crawlers pulled out of the ground, but you just want to make sure you're buying an earthworm that is local to you, not something that's shipped in from somewhere else. Usually night crawlers are fine. All right, so that's generally the look of leaf mold and how it kind of breaks down. Let me show you the camera here. Let me find it. So this is generally speaking, when you first start up your leaf compost pile, it's gonna look something like this. These are just leaves that just fell out of my garden now. This size, they're still gonna break down but you want them to sort of get chopped up by a mower. Once they're chopped up by a mower, they've dried a little bit. This is about, I don't know, let me see if I can do this right. Probably three or four months in, they're drying out a little bit, but they're gonna start crumbling, they're gonna start browning more. The colored leaves that you see in here have the nitrogen, so I do recommend trying to get some fresh leaves because that helps build up um, nitrogen in there, which supports microbiology, the bacteria, helps this all break down a little bit more quickly. 
So, you know, you're starting to pile a couple months in, you're keeping this moist, something that looks more like that. It begins to get a nice dark color because it's moist, softening up, crumbling. Somewhere around, and it's hard for me to tell you the exact, you know, months because it's going to really vary on where you put the pen, how much moisture you get, what's going on with it. But this is six, eight months old and it's starting to really break down and look beautiful. You can start telling that it's getting ready when it starts looking something like this. You can use it right here as mulch. You can go put it down on top of your garden beds for the winter or in the spring and this will continue to break down. The biology, the fungus, the earthworms are going to eat this. They're going to love it. It's not, you know, broken down to the level that I like, but it's just filled with good stuff. So, of course, you could put leaves down like this, but they're going to blow away. You know, if you can chop them up even better. But if you could get this going for four or six months, eight months, it looks something like this. This is great stuff to put on your soil in the fall, in the spring. Use it as your mulch during the summer. It's just wonderful. It, you can't lose using that. After about maybe 10 months, 12 months, a little bit longer, you get something like this. It is really well broken down. This is just leaves. This, it, All of this right here comes from those three metal containers I showed you. So I wasn't putting in any kind of nitrogen source. It's just broken down. And this goes right into my garden. I will mix that into the top four inches or six inches of the soil so when it's you know almost done and when you smell this this well, well i'll bring it over here when you smell this it just smells sweet beautiful there's no odor to it it's just wonderful stuff i mean this is what you want your leaf compost to turn into so when it's at that level i will mix it into the top four inches of my soil just add in add it like it's organic matter you can put it on top of your soil let it break down you can mix it you know almost a one third to two thirds in your container mixes mix the leaf mold through there it's just wonderful stuff that's going to aerate the soil it's going to provide um, food for your plants it's going to hold moisture it's just really really good stuff all right and then if you're not in a place where you can build a bin or anything like that. Let me just show you this video real quick because you can get the leaves that, you know, chop them up so they look something like this. Chopped up leaves will just blow away less. <laughs> Bigger leaves will blow away. So if you can chop them up or something, or, you know, even throw some light soil on them, something to weigh them down. But you can do this. Let me find the video. I understand that you may not have enough. life are going to be breaking this down digest digesting it and it's all going to add back to the specific garden right there come spring if it's not fully broken down just scrape everything to the side put in your transplants pull it back over you have a continued mulch this mulch will break down that video was muted um i don't see why it was anyway i apologize for that so if that video was muted let me just explain it real quick that is just pine needles and chopped leaves put across the garden bed about a month ago that will allow the soil to stay moist worms can come uh, on this end I do have sound so let me know when you can hear me again um, I'm not sure what the issue is everything looks like it's on so when you are putting down just leaves as a fall mulch it's going to benefit the garden not as well as you know the final product of the leaf mold but it's going to help out. So that's an alternative that you can do. You can do that and you can make leaf mold at the same time, but leaves are just wonderful to use in the garden. Some people ask, you know, do eggshells help? Uh, worms find enough grit from the sand and stuff in your soil. So they're gonna be okay. And I apologize for the technical stuff, but that's just what happens when you're live. So 
eggshells crumbled up and really you know broken down into small pieces i use a coffee grinder they supply calcium i will just throw that onto my leaf piles onto my compost bins it's a good way to use the eggs if you just throw in whole eggshells they're going to take years to break down it's just too much surface area pulverize them in a coffee grinder all right sound is good now i'm not sure what happened but again you can use leaves you saw pine needles in that video perfect just cover up your fall beds your winter beds with that wet it down let it go the plants are going to love you come spring and summer because you're putting in that organic matter all right i think that we've covered everything that i wanted to cover this is a format that i'll be using in my public lives at time they're usually going to be about 15 minutes to 30 minutes on a specific top topic and i will answer three or four questions about that topic if you're interested in more of a formal classroom, check out my PERC memberships that are in the video description, and I will link in hose link contest to that in about five minutes. The classrooms for the membership perks are a lot smaller. I answer every single question. I stay on longer to um, really make sure you understand what's going on. And you know, I think it'll be a great way to teach, which is what I really enjoy about gardening. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys helping me out with kind of getting the software going on this. I will be doing a Q&A for the membership perks at 12 o'clock Eastern time. That's still gonna happen, but this was just really a way for me to test out this new software. Thanks so much, and I will see you guys next time. Please give this a thumbs up. It really does make a difference.